closest to a light switch, if you could please get the, uh, the rest of the lights. So this is a program about shifting mindsets. First, a little bit about myself. I'm a student of nature and an artist. However, only a few of the images that I'm using in the show today are mine, but there are a few. And I was touched by what Sarah said about the parks because I reflect on the fact that I devoted 30 years of my life serving and working in the parks as a teacher and a guide. So I too am very concerned about what's happening. Horrified, I think is the word. My task in this program, as I see it, is to help heal the broken connections in our culture. My gist is not political or practical. It's not nuts and bolts. There is no blueprint here. What I do attempt to do is describe the worldview into which most of us were born, with the aim of witnessing its transformation into a more fulfilling and life-enhancing form. Got to do some infrastructure adjustments. Um, thank you, Sue. And by the way, another thing I forgot is I want to thank Sue for helping me prepare and get ready for this program and help me give it. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm not able to do it. Um, so this is a program about shifting mindsets. An old paradigm fading and dying a new paradigm, arising, gaining strength. I call it a new dawn. And I'd like to start with a question. Is our brave new digital world the answer to everything? I'm going to pause for just a sec. Just want you to know I'm leaning both back and forth, and so I'm not always doing it. But maybe, yes, yeah, sorry about that. really rules the earth? What really sustains life? <clears throat> this. The living dance of air, water, rock, and life. And this, plants, animals, Gaia nurturing all. At this point, some of you may wonder, just what does all of this have to do with restoring the balance between the genders. 
Bear with me. Our human wholeness as co-creating male and female is essential for the health and well-being not only of ourselves, but also for the plants, the animals, and the earth. Implicit in my message is that both genders must be made free. I repeat, both genders must be made free. Both are harmed by our system. So although I refer to the subjugation of the female a little later, it is because I speak myself from the female perspective. Yet, at the dawn of the 21st century, this is not how humans live. Bear with me. The next bit is a descent into some dark stuff. Why do we go here? Because the beliefs buried at the base of our civilization have become largely unconscious for most of us, most of the time. So I now wish to name these beliefs as I see them. First you name them, then you move on into a higher orbit. Rest assured, the ascent will come, and it is beautiful. Oops, I think I went backwards. Don't know how I did that. No, oh, you're good. I'm sorry, no, I'm confused. I knew it would happen, so here you go. Yet, the darkest hour is just before dawn. The subjugation of the female conquest of nature. Are one and the same tragedy. Take a look at that one soon. So what I'd like to do is compare the old mindset, the past 5,000 years of Western civilization, with the new mindset. So let us compare. First, the old mindset. Dum, 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 dum. A chain of ideas following the links that bind us. Including these beliefs, mostly unconscious, for many. Humans are exceptional. Humankind is the be-all and end-all of creation. Humans are separate from nature. All of these are core values of the West. These potent and powerful ideas or memes lead to specific distortions in how our culture treats the natural world. Separation leads to a fight against nature. Our vision distorts and we see only competition. My basic point here 
is that our sense of separation leads to a war against nature. And since humans are a part of nature, this leads to a war against ourselves and a war between the genders. We project our struggle onto nature, seeing it as red in tooth and claw. And then we construct a world of winners and losers. We tell ourselves that the smartest win and that the rest get what they deserve. Ouch. Cooperation is devalued. We are told that competition is necessary to build the world. What if there is something far better? Yet this idea is outdated. What I mean is the idea of competition as dominant. The idea that com competition alone is the norm is what is outdated. It is actually wrong. And it is actually wrong. Much new scientific work is now revealing a different reality. New scientific work is revealing a deeply cooperative aspect to nature. Oops. Try not to do that. New scientific work is revealing a deeply cooperative aspect to nature. Salmon feed the trees. It is true, when the salmon swim upstream into the heart of the forest, they die. After ensuring the future of their babies, then 90% of their bodies become the trees, fertilizing the forest with the bounty of the oceans. This view is an underground view of a mycelium, a fungal network, that is connected to the roots of a tree. The orange-colored little blobs on there are the places where the fungus and the tree are in symbiosis with each other. So the trees feed the whole network of life beneath the surface of the ground. This refers to the mycelium, the underground portion of what we see above the surface as mushrooms. The mycelium is connected to the trees by mycorrhizae, which means fungus root. Via this connection, the whole forest is networked tree to tree. Big, healthy trees produce food that ends up in small and or weak trees transported via the fungus to the whole forest. Trees, animals, microorganisms, all are sustained as one vast superorganism. Living things are not commodities. Living things are communities. Yet we continue striving to control nature. Lonely masters, alone and separate on a living world, seemingly alone. Separation and exceptionalism lead to The idea that we arose from a blind and dumb nature. These things underpin the way scientists think about the world.
that intelligence is exclusive to humans. Incredible as it may seem, a central tenet of our culture is that intelligence was not invented until the end of the story. Oops. Intelligence was not invented until the end of the story. That intelligence arose with humans and is possessed by humans alone. Do you hear the elves giggling? is just a machine. Now you might not believe this, but many scientists are practically required to believe this by the rules of their particular in-group. And often they seem unaware of it, or at least unaware that there is another possibility. Nature is not a machine. It is self replicating, it is self repairing. In spite of our fantasies, to the contrary, machines cannot heal or build themselves. The result of the machine metaphor, it denies conscious intention to the substance of nature. If it's not conscious, it's just a resource and you can do anything you want with it. So here we arrive, at last, at the balance between the genders. The separation of our culture from the natural world leads directly to the breach in understanding between male and female. How so? Many ancient wisdom traditions describe the fundamental difference between male and female as the difference between matter and the mysterious power that animates it, with matter being female. It is no accident that mater, like alma mater, mother, and matter all arise from the same root. So if we deny conscious intention to nature, then we deny conscious intention to the female. So let us look at it this way. The female represents substance. Conscious intention becomes the exclusive property of the male. Here's where I see harm to the male side of things. It is the exclusive part that harms. Always he must take control and make all the decisions. In many venues that's true. Even when another person nearby, often a female, is better suited to that particular decision. So let us look at it this way. The male represents action. 
but as the responsive reading attempted to show, all of us, male, female, and other, are both action and substance. Frankly, this is depressing. And by that I mean all of the dissent of the beliefs that have defined our civilization that are now completely changing. The result of all of this separation, the result alienation. Alienation is the result of denying intention to one gender and requiring the other to determine all action. Another result is poverty. Alienated, we lose our natural empathy for each other, resulting in struggles for survival. Now the new mindset. Breaking the chain. Let's turn the whole thing around. What if intelligence is not the end of the story, <coughs> but the beginning? If this is where we start, then everything that follows is an expression of intelligence. All of it. <coughs> Bacteria, microalgae, tiny protozoa, now known as ciliates, plants, <coughs> animals, and the human animal. everything. When you reunify the broken sides of our culture, both substance as represented by the female as represented by the male. Both, together, a manifestation of the cosmic process. Consciousness expressing itself. Then, as if we had awakened from a bad dream, we can restore the balance between the genders. And amazing things emanate or come out of, come forth from that. When we restore the balance, heal the halves of our broken culture, then something miraculous happens. The human nature divide dissolves.
one of my favorite artists, Alex Gray. And even more profoundly, the spirit and matter divide, dissolves. Now watch this one close. Spirit matter divide dissolves. <laughs> Cooperation and connection follows naturally. All is seen as sacred. All is part of one mind, one body. No separation. Frankly, I find this exhilarating. Yes, me too, standing here, me too. There are so many of us, and I refer of course to the me too hashtag and the movement of me too. There are so many of us, yet. Women find their voice. We begin to speak the truth. It is important to say also that boys are not immune. I claim my heritage. for me to say. I claim the sanctity of my body. I claim the calling of my soul. I have always known this. I remember. Nature is not predictable. Nature is not mechanical. <coughs> And nature is not separate from humans, nor are men and women able to create a world without loving and embracing each other. Yet nature is boundlessly creative. Those three previous statements, the meaning of them is encoded within this figure that I just showed, called the Lorentz Attractor, that nature is not predictable, not mechanical, and that we are a part of it. There will be a discussion group afterwards if we have enough time. I, I guess there will be a discussion group for those who are interested.
And so, if you're curious about what the significance of this particular Lorenz attractor is, feel free to ask me. Yet nature is boundlessly creative. Thank you for listening. Take it away, Sally.